Thanks for joining us on The Cafe. Mel and I had the pleasure to interview an incredible filmmaker a couple of days ago. Take a look. Well, she's one of the UK's most respected filmmakers, directing many successful films, including the charming worldwide breakout hit Bend It Like Beckham and also Bride and Prejudice, starring our own Martin Henderson. Now, her latest film, Viceroy's House, is an historical epic with a very personal story as well. It's so fantastic to have you here, Gorinda, and congratulations on Viceroy's House. It is absolutely amazing thank you um it's a bit different to bend it like beckham um but i, I wanted to make uh, a s historical sweeping lush huge movie uh, like david lean movies that uh, i had loved growing up and of course uh, the last British film made on the subject of Viceroy's House was Gandhi, which was 35 years ago. Well, it's a beautiful movie, and I would suspect highly emotional for you to make as well. For those that don't know the story, can you give us a brief synopsis? Sure. Uh, the film is set in 1947 in India, and it's the last days of the British Empire in India. Uh, and India is being given her freedom, and... Um, the new Viceroy, which is the last Viceroy, Earl Mountbatten, and his wife, Edwina Mountbatten, are coming to India to hand India back. Uh, but when they got there, there were uh, terrible riots. Um, the country was in disarray, having come to that point under the leadership of Gandhi, you know. Um, and so Britain decided the best way forward was to divide the country, to partition the country. And in partitioning, two states in the north of the country they created the new country Pakistan and it's personal for me because my family and my ancestral homeland became part of Pakistan uh, a different country that I didn't really have access to and I still don't have access to so growing up in London for me uh, sometimes was tough because I, I felt I didn't have an, uh, an ancestral home. Mm. So your grandmother and grandfather they were actually fleeing from what was to become Pakistan to India? Yes um, it was the biggest forced migration of humans in history. What, 14 million or something? That's right, people? yeah, 14, 14 million. million yes, and a million That's plus right. dead. That's right, three yeah. times New Zealand, right? Yeah. <laughs> and the rest. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people, but it, leaders, uh, I mean, my film is really, a, um, it's set like an upstairs, downstairs story. So upstairs we have Matt Matten negotiating with Gandhi and Nehru and Jinnah, but we follow those negotiations and the decision and impact of those negotiations on the servants, on the ordinary people downstairs who end up becoming refugees as well. So it's that process of how when leaders make these sort of big decisions, how it affects the little people. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll take a quick look at this clip right now so you can have a better understanding of what this movie is all about. Well, whatever their differences are, all Indians have one thing in common. What's that? They can't wait to get rid of us. Your father taught me the future is what we make it. We are brothers with one soul. To divide us on religious grounds is against the will of God. Without peace, all other dreams vanish and are reduced to ashes. <laughs> India is a ship on fire. Oh, it looks so incredible. <laughs> it's epic, yes. Yeah. Uh, it was hard work shooting in India, but I had an amazing cast. Um, I couldn't have been blessed with well, so, such a great cast. Well, I heard you, you casted Hugh Bonneville uh, before you saw him in Downton Abbey. Yes, Downton Abbey hadn't even come on air when we had started working on the film, on the script. Um, and then Downton Abbey had finished by the time we, fi we were making our film. So it was quite nice. That was like a nice trailer, I think, for, mm. for my film. He's very good in it. And also, I tell who I think is absolutely remarkable, Gillian yeah, Anderson yeah. Yes. plays Edwina, um, the, the, the wife. Yes. She is extraordinary. Very much so. Um, the film uh, obviously was watched very keenly uh, by the royals, you know, because that's their relatives, mm. you know, for them it's a home movie. Well, we must get it right. Oh, we must. <laughs> and Pamela Mountbatten, uh, so Lord Mountbatten was uh, Prince Charles' uh, favourite uncle. He, he described him as the, as the grandfather he never had. Mm. Um, so he was when I told him I was making this film, he was really excited about it, but very concerned as well. Uh, once I told him what the story was, he actually helped me with some of the story um, storylines and introduced some books to me. In fact, the second book that our film is based on. Um, but all the way through, he kept giving me some little 
casting tips and said, make sure Mountbatten does this. You know, he always did this with his oh, hands. And uh, Mountbatten's daughter, uh, after she saw the film, liked it a lot, but actually went up to Hugh and said, you were very good, but I'm afraid you're far too chunky <laughs> <laughs> to play my father. <laughs> now, some incredible scenes. Did you actually use, you know, Viceroy's house? Yes. So we got the great look that we got because we were able to shoot in the real Viceroy's house, mm. which is now called Rashtrapati Bhavan. Uh, in Delhi, it's the sort of great tourist spot where everyone goes to because it's the biggest uh, palace of any leader in the wow. world. You also filmed in another location, didn't you, where you had 10 minutes to get a huge group scene outside. Yeah, so we, th there, we, sh we shot there at the Umayyad Bhavan Palace, which that. is the palace of the Maharaja of Jodhpur. And it was very hard shooting there because it's a working hotel. And when we needed to do scenes with lots and lots of extras, the hotel staff got very nervous to have all these sort of Indians running around, sort of being served. Um, but I, wa I wanted to do the big shot that actually is the poster of the film. Um, and it's, they actually had 5,000 staff, the Mountbatten's, in, in their place, in the Viceroy's house. Uh, but I had sort of less than that. But I wanted to do a big shot of all of them with the Mountbatten sitting in front of them, which is actually a famous still. Um, and we were able to set that up with the hotel. Uh, but as things got late with our scenes with Gandhi and all the rest of it, like everything with filmmaking. I, in the end, only had 10 minutes to shoot that. And everyone said, you're not going to do it. You have to cancel it. Because Gillian's not even dressed for the scene. Because <laughs> Gillian was wearing something else. And she's such a trooper. She said, just give me the, clap, the dress. And she went behind a bush in the garden, like one of those bushes. <laughs> she went behind one of those bushes and literally stripped and put her outfit on and sat down. And I went, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, smile. And then we took the picture and that is the big epic photo that ended up on the poster. Oh, that is wonderful. I could talk to you for hours about this movie. Congratulations. Thank you very You must much. be immensely proud as well, and I hope Kiwis that go and watch it learn a lot too. Oh, yes. lovely. I was Googling frantically after I saw yeah. it. It's oh, fascinating. Thank you. A story that needed to be told, and you've done such a brilliant job of it, so congratulations. Oh, thank, thank you very so much. Thank you so much, Gurinder. Advice Roy's house is in cinemas across New Zealand from tomorrow. Do make sure you take a box of tissues. It gets quite emotional at times. What an incredible woman and what a story. Great film as well. Go see it. Yes, go see it.